What's going on folks? Today we're going to be looking at the analog to digital converter chip, the MCP3008, right here. So, I'm only going to do this for the Raspberry Pi, since the, anal or, uh, the Arduinos have onboard ADC chips already built in, or uh, built into the, the microprocessor. So, uh, I'm not going to worry about doing that, but the Raspberry Pi does not have an onboard ADC, or analog to digital converter. So we are going to look at how to set up the Raspberry Pi to read analog signals. So first what we're going to need to do is take a look at the pinouts of the MCP3008, I'm just going to call it the MCP, uh, and the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now we have this out where you need our leads here. All right, so I've got my laptop in front of me. We're going to start hooking this up. Now there are four main data lines uh, that we use to communicate with the Raspberry Pi. It's called SPI, and those are four pins, and we're going to hook those up with the blue, green, yellow, and orange right here. And it goes from pin 10 up to pin 13. So this is pin nine. All right, so there you have it. So pin 10 is CS or SHDN. So this one goes into the uh, CS0 right here. Uh, I don't know what CS1 is for. It might be for the SPI1 pins down here, but we're using SPI0. So we're going into SPI0 CS0 right there. Uh, and that is the blue wire on pin 10. So this is in pin 24 here. Uh, the next one that is plugged into the MCP3008 on the green wire is DN. So it's coming into this chip. Uh, this is going to uh, go into the slave. It's DN. So it's master out slave in. So that's going to be pin 19 which is up two spots on the opposite side on pin 19. All right, the next one is D out. So that is the MCP out to the master, master in. So that's MISO, master in, slave out. So we're going to grab the yellow pin and that's going to go into pin 21, just one uh, more pin down from Mosi, and then the last one is clock that just makes sure the communication is synced up and that is again just one more pin down from the others on this side Ooh. okay so these four pins should be plugged in like this and I'll have a schematic drawn up for you that I'll put on the screen right now. Um, but this is about what it looks like. Uh, this wire I'm going to take off. And this can be plugged or powered from 2.7 to 5.5 volts. So I'm going to use 5 volts, uh, which is this. So we've got the power and ground going in, we've got power and ground from the Raspberry Pi, and we've got our communication cables. So we've got the power plugged into the Raspberry Pi, um, got all the communication pins plugged in. Now what we're going to do is plug in a So let's get over and start programming this thing. Okay, so what we're going to do now is program the Raspberry Pi, and the way we're going to do that is connect to it headlessly. Uh, I've got the Raspberry Pi and the MCP3008 right here, and I'm just going to plug it into power. Uh, if you don't know how to uh, run the Raspberry Pi headlessly with your desktop, check out the video I made. I made it just to show you how to connect to it headlessly in a quick start guide, and I tried to include everything you need to know to get going. But yeah, I'll put that video down in the description, check that out. But uh, if you've done that, just go with me to putty, load, open that. We are logged into the Raspberry Pi headlessly. 
what we're going to do now is we're going to use Adafruit's library for the MCP3008. So something that we're going to have to do uh, is enable SPI. That's similar to enabling SSH uh, on when we uh, set up the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to say sudo raspy-config. Uh, we're going to go down to interfacing options. Hit enter. Right here, SPI, enter. Would you like the SPI interface to be enabled? Yes. It is enabled, right arrow to finish, and there you go. That's all you need to do there. Uh, necessary packages, sudo app get update. Okay, so that took forever, and I don't even know if it finished correctly because the uh, putty client went inactive. If you uh, don't click on it for very long, it will time out. Let's just go ahead and keep going. Uh, install pip3. Uh, this is a pretty fresh install of uh, Raspbian, so I don't have pip3 installed yet. So sudo apt get install python3. Okay, sudo pip3 install Adafruit Blinka. Sudo pip3 install Adafruit CircuitPython MCP3XXX. Oh, okay, so full disclosure, I had some trouble. Um, I didn't think to restart the Raspberry Pi after I installed the packages, so that was probably my fault. Just let me know down in the comments if you have any trouble, and I'll try to uh, help you out. Okay, so uh, we're going to look in the home directory. We have the analog inputs for Raspberry Pi using the MCP3008.py. So let's run this. It's a long name. I'd recommend saving it under a different name so you can quickly run it uh, whenever you need to run it again. Right now, uh, it will only update if the input's changed, I found. So I'm turning the potentiometer run that again okay so uh, we got volume I guess that's what it's calling the uh, analog input but this is showing that it is successful now if you want to change the inputs on the um, MCP3008 let's open this up and see what we can do Set volume, remap range, convert 16-bit to that. Set volume. Uh, the trim pot value, it's changing it to from the analog to a 0 to 100 value. So here, this is the print command. It is printing set volume, which is the remap value. But if we put in trim pot, uh, that is the raw value from the potentiometer. So uh, to rename it, hit Control O while you're in the uh, program. Hit Enter. Yes, save under different name. Exit. So now you'll see that we have uh, another program, MCP3008, that should input or excuse me, that should output the analog value, the raw value, uh, instead of a, a percentage. So let's Python 3 MCP 3008.py. Oh, it's adding the percentage on there, but okay. See, so now we are getting the full 16 bit value. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. And so that's how you change it from a percentage to the actual 16 bit value. Nano is just the text editor that we're using to modify the program. Let's look to see where it 
selects the input on the MCP because we want to be able to change that because there's eight inputs. We want to be able to use all of them. Create an analog input channel on pin zero. So let's change that to pin seven and we'll move our wire to pin eight because this is zero indexed. The physical pins are one indexed. So uh, P7 should be physical pin eight since pin one was P0. Uh, so let's uh, save modified, yes, write it to that. Okay, so I'm not even touching it yet and it is changing by quite a bit and that's just because those tiny jitters are uh, changing the value more than the tolerance that we put in there. So let's cancel that, change the tolerance to 150. Yes, save, run it like that. Okay, now let's see here. Okay, so we're reading from pin seven, our physical pin eight, uh, P7 in software. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Cancel that, so let's look at the program one last time. Uh, this is the one that you import um, just with the command on Adafruit's website. Uh, we talk, change the tolerance. Uh, this line right here is the one that you change for each pin and this one's named channel zero, but you can uh, name each channel, whatever you want, channel one, two, three, four. Um, and analog in is, I guess, a function uh, or an object uh, that you input MCP um, using this. Okay, so let's look at uh, this program one more time. This line right here declares the uh, physical pin. If you want uh, to add more inputs, all you have to do is copy this. So let's say channel, I'll just say 888 equals analog in MCP, MCP dot P6. And that's going to be pin seven. Uh, and so instead of chan zero later down here, uh, duh, 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 duh. so uh, right here, trim pot equals chan zero dot value. If we wanted to use that other pin, we would just change that to that. Um, and then we can have trim pot two. And then if we wanted to use two, we would just say trim pot equals chan zero dot value. And then that will read uh, from pin eight or software pin seven right here. So um, that's how you set up uh, multiple inputs on the MCP. Uh, and then you can remap the range if you don't wanna use that absolute analog value. Um, and then this is just how it prints out right here. Uh, saves the value last read so it can compare it with a new value. Okay, so that's how you get started with the MCP3008 on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I hope that was helpful. I'm going to upload some code. I'm going to try to get a GitHub uh, started. I know someone suggested that on one of my previous videos. Um, so I'm going to try to get a GitHub going and that way you can just download the code that you see here. But if you have any questions, please comment down below. Uh, I check my comments all the time and I get notifications still because I only have like 20 something subscribers. So <laughs> whenever I get a, a comment, I still get a notification for it and I will try to answer your questions as best as possible. So anyway, thank you for watching. Be sure to be kind to someone today and I will see you guys next time. Peace.